Welcome to this tutorial which is going to look at motion blur in Houdini's default renderer mantra. So I've set up a scene here with a box which is animated along a curve. And we're going to use this to demonstrate motion blur. So let's position it in the middle frame here where it's moving. And let's lay down a mantra node. I'm going to leave it for the moment with the default options and render. And there, as you can see, we get a cube without any motion blur on it. And that's because by default, Mantra does not enable motion blur. We have to enable it here in the Properties tab and the Samples sub-tab. And we have to select Allow Motion Blur. If we re-render, we should see, and indeed we do, that our cube now has motion blur. So there are some options on the camera node which can affect motion blur. So let's have a look at them. Here's the camera. And on the sampling tab, there's this parameter shutter time, which by default is set to 0.5. Shutter time controls what proportion of each frame the camera shutter is actually open. So in this case it's open for half the time. So if we were filming at say one frame per second then the shutter would be open for the first half second, closed for half a second and then would open again for the first half second of the next frame. So if we increase this value to 1 the shutter is open for the entire length of the frame. And this will tend to lengthen the trails for the motion blur. Let's have a look at that. And we can see that the second version is with much longer trails. And conversely, if we reduce the shutter time down to something small, then we find that the motion blur is minimal. So let's look at a different aspect of motion blur. Something that's commonly called deformation blur. That's blur that's happening here at the geometry level, with individual points moving relative to each other. I've taken away all the animation at the scene level here on our box object. It's no longer following a path. But I've added a transform SOP here before the facet with a simple expression to move the top of the box up and down. I put it here before the facet because if we put it after the facet then only the top would move and it wouldn't be connected to the other faces of the box. So here's what's happening. There's certainly plenty of movement. So what if we were to render the scene here? I've still got motion blur enabled on my mantra node. But as you can see, we're not getting any motion blur when we render. And the reason for that is by default, mantra only looks here at the scene level for motion to include in motion blur. If you want to get at deformation motion blur or geometry level blur, we need to do something extra. And there are two methods to get deformation motion blur in Mantra. The first one is to enable geometry velocity blur. Here it is. It's off by default and we can turn it on here on the sampling subtab. And what geometry velocity blur does is look for ask Mantra to look for a attribute on each of the points of your geometry called V for velocity. And since Mantra knows the velocity of each of these points, it's able to calculate the motion blur for them. The advantage of this method of deformation motion blur, motion blur is that you can enable it on a per object basis. So Mantra doesn't waste its time doing deformation calculations on geometry which is not deforming very much or not at all. Let's have a look inside our object here. 
and we can see that if we bring up a details view we don't actually have a velocity attribute attached to our points you don't get it automatically you need to calculate it and we do that using the trail sop so let's lay down a trail sop and we set it to calculate velocity now we can see here we've got uh, a velocity vector for each point and it's correctly reflecting the movement of the top of the box. So now when we render we should see that we're getting motion blur and indeed we are. The top of that is motion blurring. Well, let's demonstrate the other method of calculating deformation blur, so let's turn this off. The other method requires setting a parameter on the mantra node. There it is. And in the sampling tab, we have this parameter geo time samples. What this is doing is telling Houdini how many copies of the geometry to pass across to mantra. So by default, we're only passing a single copy which is the geometry as it stands at the beginning of the frame. If I up this to 2, then we're passing a copy at the beginning of the frame and a copy of the geometry at the end of the frame. By comparing the two, Mantra can render motion blur. So let's have a look and see whether that works. And as we can see, we're still getting motion blur here on the top of the cube. Just a quick word on the advantages and disadvantages of this method of calculating deformation motion blur. First of all, the disadvantage. This is that it applies to every object in the scene. <coughs> so potentially you're generating a lot more geometry and passing it to mantra than you need to if only a couple of your objects are deforming. It can't be enabled or disabled on a per object basis like geometry velocity blur. The advantage of this method is that it's able, if the samples are high enough, to analyze and correctly render non-linear deformations. Whereas geometry velocity blur, which is relying on a vector velocity, is always calculating linear deformations. Another demonstration of when you will need geometry velocity blur, blur is when you've got a dynamics simulation. And as you know, when you have a dynamics simulation, and I've got a simple one here with the box falling down onto the plane, your object usually starts off as a stationary, static object. And here we can see there's no animation at the scene level on our box. And then the shelf tools create this DOP import. And what the DOP import tends to do is transform the input geometry groups. The input geometry, in other words. So it's taking the box and it's transforming it according to the motion that's been calculated in the DOP network. In other words, the animation is happening here at the geometry level. And fortunately, the DOPs import gives us for free some velocity values on our points. So if we want to motion blur an object which is subject to a DOP simulation, then we need to enable geometry velocity blur. We should find that our object, let's just render that, is motion blurred. And there it is.